The reasons now are so clear and so obvious. Please, parents, open up your eyes, believe the stories you're seeing in the news because they are real, and it's actually much worse than you see. In 2020, there was this worldwide pandemic. And the good news is that the homeschooling population essentially doubled that year. Mm -hmm. Went from 5% of the K through 12 students to 10%, ballpark numbers. My, and, and those numbers are pretty consistent among church Christian families and unchurched families. My question is, seriously, only 10% of K through 12 students are homeschooled? That should be 90%. Right. Uh, because it's so good. However, as you said, it's scary. Uh, it's hard. Uh, there's plenty of reasons we can come up with why it's we can't do it. And yet, what happened in 2020 is a lot of folks had a mandatory trial run, and they realized, hey, you know what? Not only can we do this, this is pretty good for us. It's good right. for our family. It's good for our kids. And so you had a lot of folks start, and the homeschool population doubled. Uh, with everything that's happened in the last four years, it should be pushing 50%, pushing 90% in four more years. So, yes, I'm saying not only get your kids out of a bad system, but get your kids into the best system. You know, I didn't intend for the conversation to go here. And I, I feel like I have to share a little story. When we set out to film Schoolhouse Rocked the Homeschool Revolution, I had a conviction that homeschooling was a good option for families. And I wanted to tell people, look at this great option. It's working great for us. It's bringing blessings. We love it. And at the same time, I really resisted saying, parents, you've got to do this, right? I, I didn't want to be the Holy Spirit for people. I didn't want to say, this is the only way. And uh, I wanted to soft pedal it a little bit. And then we started digging in. And as we filmed the, the movie and as we researched over the years before we released it, toward the end of the movie, I was saying, this is a necessity every family that can do it should do it. And I know I'm speaking to an audience now of many men who aren't homeschooling. And so if you're feeling beat up, I want to encourage you a little bit. Okay. First of all, we were terrified. Rachel and Davis were terrified and it was never easy. We've got our first one graduating right now and it hasn't been easy for 18 years, but just like Davis, I can tell you, the blessings have been so great. But on the, on the flip side of that, the reasons now are so clear and so obvious. Please, parents, open up your eyes. Believe the stories you're seeing in the news because they are real. And it's actually much worse than you see. It is the spirit of the public schools to indoctrinate your kids into a life of secular hedonism, Marxism, uh, globalism, multiculturalism, all of the isms that stand opposed to what you believe and what your family stands for. And I've said on this show before, and I'll say it again, even if every adult in a church is fully committed to serving Christ and is making disciples and is really, truly loving the Lord with their whole heart, if the whole next generation in the church is being educated by the secular state, the church dies in a generation. It is that serious. So folks, um, I'm pre prescribing here. And I know, and Davis knows, there are certain circumstances where because of uh, divorce or custody or other things, adoption, uh, foster care, where parents cannot take their kids out of the schools. And so Davis, I want us to take a step further. If we're talking to a dad who understands the importance of raising their kid in the fear and admonition of the Lord, in the paideia of the Lord, and they can't take their kids out of the schools, how would you encourage them? What would you tell them to do? Yeah, so the first thing I would do there is go right back to Deuteronomy 6. So that's where we're told to love God ourselves with our all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, but then to Teach that to our kids so that our kids will fall in love with God. And then Deuteronomy 6, Moses gives four practical times to do that. 
when you rise up, when you lie down, when you sit, and when you walk along the way. So one way I say this is half of Deuteronomy 6 happens in the bedroom. Mm. So when you get your kids up in the morning, when you put them down at bedtime, do not rush those processes. Amen. Take your time to make it a joyful, God-honoring waking up. When you put them down, linger with them, read books to them, tell them stories, read them books, read the Bible, say prayers with them, uh, play with them a little bit, but spend some quality and quantity time with them at bedtime. When you sit along, when you sit together, again, meal times to me are an underused opportunity to train your kids, to love your kids, to teach them to love God, to show them how much you love God. So sometimes it's good to have a question you want to ask at, at mealtime, and that generates a conversation. Uh, you can have catechism books to answer, ask some theological questions. You can have a devotional book that you read together at dinner time while everybody's sitting there. Oh, when our kids were young, one of the things we did, they were in Awana, which is a Bible memory program, and we all did our memory verses at the dinner table. And it yeah. took a while to go through everybody's verses, and you learned other kids' verses by osmosis, but that was just one of our traditions and habits as a family. So do the whole meal together. Have everybody together during the prep, during the eating, during the cleanup. Beautiful things happen during mealtimes. And then you're probably spending a lot of time in the van, in the car, driving around, don't waste that mo those moments. Don't Amen. just pop in a, a DVD. Listen to some good audiobooks. Have some good conversations. Ask them questions. Sing some songs. I mean, my kids loved singing songs in the van, and there were some that they just automatically started, and it's like, oh boy, here we go with the round of songs again. But it was a joyful family time together. So whatever you decide to do in the van, be in charge. Be the parent, make it intentional, make it something that builds into their lives to teach them, train them, and give them something that's good for their soul, uh, not something that's frivolous or trivial or actually ends up being a waste of time. This episode of Rapid Response was brought to you by CTC Math. Visit them at ctcmath.com today.